Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wiryawan. And today, really quick, I just want to show you how I edit my raw Micro Four Thirds images using only Adobe Lightroom. Let's go. So for the first image right here on my computer, as you can see, we have a very simple landscape image. This was taken in December. This was part of my everyday photography challenge. And this was taken using the Panasonic 12 to 32 millimeter kit lens with the Panasonic GX85. So first things first, usually what I will do when I'm uh, editing my raw picture is I will apply some user preset right here. I have what's called Gary low ISO and Gary high ISO. So if it's ISO 200, ISO 400, I will usually just use low ISO. And if I check on the image, if it's still grainy, then I will just go into the noise reduction panel and I will probably add more luminance. Or if it's too soft, then I will reduce the luminance. Uh, as needed, but usually I will just leave it as it is. It's about 20 on the luminance scale right here. Anyway, uh, we'll just uh, go back with what happens when I use my uh, ISO preset right here. So basically, it will add a little bit of clarity, about 20, dehaze about 10, and then it will also increase a little bit of shadow, increase a little bit of white, and also reduce a little bit of black to get that contrasty looking image. And also what happens is, uh, again, the noise reduction thing going on, as well as a little bit of sharpening. We have about 48. This is my default kind of value, but you can uh, increase or reduce as needed. I increase the detail to about 70. I reduce the radius. But the most important thing here is masking. And if you're using Windows PC and you click Alt and uh, press the mouse together, you can kind of see when you're uh, dealing with the masking, which areas are masked and which area uh, does get the sharpening. So the white lines represents the part that's being sharpened. I usually like to get my masking a little bit high because I just want sort of the edges to be sharp, not the actual noise or grain on the image. So usually about 60 something is good enough for me. So now let's get back to the main uh, panel right here where we edit some of the exposure as you can sh as you can see on the image right here it is a little bit of dark especially on the uh, uh, foreground area the paddy field and also the building what i usually do on landscape picture like this i will just increase the shadow something like this and then i will also try to reduce the highlight something like this so we get blue sky if it involves a blue sky of some sort, then I will usually try to go down into the luminance of the color panel right here. And then I will just drag down the luminance of the blue color. As you can see, it kind of adds a little bit more pop of blue on the actual sky right there. So that's what I will usually do. But on this picture, I want to do something a little bit different. Um, uh, I want to I wanna try to increase the exposure of just the main subject of this image, which is the building right there and also the paddy field and without involving uh, the sky exposure and whatnot. So let's try to do it use, using masking tool right here. So on the masking tool, we have some selections. We have subject, sky, and background. I will, I will kind of uh, use the sky right now because I want to get the exposure of the sky controlled by using the masking. And then I can use the overall basic adjustment without the masking for everything else. And we have two different kinds of controls right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and press the sky right here. So it will try to detect which part of this image is the sky. And I think it is very accurate most of the time. So I can really depend on it. So yes, it selected uh, most of the correct part of the image, the sky, which I really want on this image. Now, what I want to do is I want to reduce the exposure of the sky without affecting the highlight or the shadow. I might also increase a little bit of the haze, uh, which is adding a little bit more pop into the overall sky right here. But as you can see, the image now starts to look a little bit dark. 
after I adjusted the sky. So I, I will just go back to the main editing panel. I will try to reduce slightly the shadows and increase the highlights slightly because I want to reduce that HDR looking kind of image. I want to make it look as natural, as real as possible. So I will just try to add the exposure of the overall image right here. As you can see, the building starts to look a little bit washed out, also the paddy field. So what I want to do is I'm going to increase a little bit of the dehaze to add more contrast back into the image, maybe about 20, something like that. I will reduce the shadow just a little bit more. I don't want to look too HDR. <laughs> it's just not a good look in 2023. So I'm going to ex increase the exposure a little bit and now I will try to balance the sky by going back to the masking, select the previous sky mask and just reducing the exposure of the sky using the exposure control on the masking. Or you can go down into the dehaze and add a little bit more dehaze on the sky. Don't go overboard with the dehaze because it will just look weird. See, <laughs> it just doesn't look natural. So anything about 20 is just uh, it's still fine in my opinion and I want to try to reduce the highlight just a little bit without affecting the highlight of the main subject of the image. And maybe I want to add a little bit of vignette as some sort of aesthetic effect. So I will just choose, uh, I have a few vignette presets right here, but what I want to do is basically I want to do it manually without the preset and I will just Go down right here. This, my preset has already some sort of vignette built in, but I want to increase it a little bit more. So I want to go to about minus 20 something, uh, which is nice. And then, yeah, this looks, this looks good already. So yes, this is one picture right here. I will export the image so that you can take a look at how the whole image is looking after we edit it. Now I want to show a little bit of before and after. So before we edit the image, it looks like that, like the part on the left. And then after we edit the image, it looks something like this. This is still a little bit HDR-y in my opinion. We can still fine tune it better, but uh, this is more than good enough for me right now. And I'm quite happy with the result, especially for the sky. I think we get a really nice blue color, which is a uh, more closer to the actual sky that I saw when I took this picture uh, at that time. And also the paddy field is sort of brighter. The building is sort of brighter as well. And maybe we can still balance it a little bit better. But for now, this is more than good enough. So for the next image, we have this cool portrait of my wife right here, still taken using the same lens, the 12 to 32 millimeter kit lens of the Panasonic GX85. And this was at 18 millimeter f5.6. We don't have that much background blur to be honest, but it is more than good enough in my opinion. And as you can see, the result is quite perfect. If you can uh, see on uh, the picture right here, whoa, what happened right here? I think I pressed something. But anyway, let's start to edit this image. Again, I will uh, start with my user preset right here, low ISO, and automatically it will add a little bit of clarity, about 21, a little bit of dehaze, about 10, a little bit of shadow whites, and also a little bit of decrease of the blacks, as well as a little bit of vignette sharpening and noise reduction, as I mentioned earlier but now we want to take it up a notch and try to make this picture look even better so what i'm going to do right now is uh, i want to brighten the subject of this picture which is my wife but to be honest if we increase the shadow we'll get that weird gray kind of hair look which i don't really like personally so rather than increasing the shadow i will just use again another masking on the lightroom we have the subject here uh, which is quite accurate as well we're just gonna press the masking tool right here and it will try to detect my wife on this picture so i want to try to separate a little bit uh, the subject with the background using this masking tool. So I can have two individual different kind of uh, things going on in this image. And uh, by doing that, I can make my wife pops even more on this image. All right, so the masking tool finally works. So 
uh, instead of adding the shadow on the main editing panel, we're just gonna add some exposure on just the subject of this image. And as you can see, the result is much better. We don't have as much gray hair on my wife, uh, which she will appreciate, <laughs> of course. And we can add a little bit of contrast by decreasing the blacks or again, increasing just a little bit of dehaze and get a little bit of that contrasty look. And for my subject, especially with uh, Panasonic cameras and also Micro Four Thirds cameras in general, I want to have my subject a little bit more to the orange thing to get better skin color. Something like this by increasing the temperature of the color to about 10 or so. I think we get a nice separation from the background. But now we want to try to work on the background. So instead of going back to the main editing panel, I will try to create a new mask and select the background. And yeah, we have the uh, masking tool selecting the right part of the image, which is just the background. And now I'm going to try to edit the background. First, I want to add just a little bit of exposure to the paddy field, but not to the sky. So I'm going to try to increase the shadow just a little bit, something like this. And then I'm also going to increase the dehaze but this time I wanna add a little bit more than uh, what I'm usually uh, comfortable with, about 25, 26, just to get a little bit more pop on the paddy field. And also, uh, I wanna try to select the sky individually just to get another control of the image uh, separately from the subject and from the uh, background. So I'm going to create a new mask and select sky. This will take a while, but we have all the time. <laughs> All right, I think we have the masking tool working properly, selecting just the sky of this image. And what I wanna do is I wanna decrease a little bit the exposure of the overall sky so it looks better. It's more blue, which I really like. I'm going to try to play around with the temperature and try to make it even bluer, but not too much, not to make it unnatural. And the key here is just being subtle. Uh, don't try to go overboard with the settings and also increasing the dehaze a little bit more Yes, something like that and that works really nice especially on this image and I'm quite happy with the image and We're just gonna try to add a little bit more vignette on the main editing panel right here So we can go down into the vignetting part post crop vignetting I'm going to add just a little bit more vignette I'm going to experiment uh, with the slider here until I found the value that I'm comfortable with, which is about 18 or 19 right here. And yeah, I think this looks nice, but now it's time for me to crop a little bit of the image to make the composition better after we give it some color treatment. So I'm going to crop a little bit of this part of the image right here. I don't really like the tree branch right here. I'm just going to cut it straight away. So yes, something like this, but I wanna keep my wife right in the middle because I think it will make a strong composition, especially for portrait. Don't be afraid to crop your image as long as you don't go overboard with your uh, settings, with your cropping, then I think it is still fine. 16 megapixel with Micro Four the sensor is still more than enough. And yes, this is the final result right here. So let's try to show you uh, the before and after and as you can see on the left this is the before on the right this is the after it's a very dramatic difference it doesn't have that HDR look that weird kind of shadow gray hair thing going on with the usual HDR uh, portrait editing just like on the landscape I much prefer my method right here I'm really thankful to, for the uh, advanced masking tools that Lightroom now have it really saves a lot of time and you can get a much much better result uh, than uh, the traditional uh, manual masking so I really enjoy the uh, the tools that we have with Lightroom and also the final result I think it looks natural it looks very similar to what I actually see with my own eyes when I'm taking this picture on the location and yeah I hope that uh, by doing this kind of tutorial, you'll be able to uh, understand more of how to edit raw images in Lightroom for Micro Fortis cameras.
So yes, that's how I edit raw micro footage pictures using Adobe Lightroom. I don't really use any weird third party plugins such as DxO Pure Raw or Nick Collection or any of that kind of filmic effect and whatnot. I just keep it very simple. Just use whatever is in Lightroom. I try to uh, keep it very efficient, very effective just using one software unless I really need to go to Photoshop to do some weird layering things going on. I try to keep it just using only Adobe Lightroom. And I'm really thankful with some of the new masking tools that really saves a lot of time rather than doing manual masking. I think it helped me to get better individual control of every part of the image. And yeah, what I aim uh, for when I'm editing raw pictures using Lightroom is that I wanna have a more natural look like uh, what I see with my eyes, but without going overboard with the HDR thing that uh, many landscape photographers usually does. I try to keep it as natural, as real as possible, but I wanna add a little bit more pop more color without adding saturation as well so yeah this is how i do it and i hope that this is useful for you so that is all for today's video i hope that you find this video to be useful so yeah please comment down below if you have any question about how to edit raw pictures uh, especially raw micro footage pictures using adobe lightroom and i will try to answer your question as best as i can also don't forget to support my channel by liking this video sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below thank you and goodbye